Could you give us an overview about the pandemic, how it's impacted sports and how the leagues, the fans, the athletes, how things have sort of changed, how they've reacted, how you would sort of, uh, you know, see, see the experience over the last few months? Andy, we could definitely talk about this for hours. You know, I think this time of COVID has been, you know, particularly unique in that it's affected everybody. It's not been one location, one group of people, one entity, and it's affected people both inside and outside of sports. So in some ways there's been kind of a shared um, burden and goal in overcoming obstacles. So, you know, in our strategy really has been of um, how can we engage with sports fans in different ways? How do we work with our league partners um, on safety protocols? And how do we make sure we're adapting our broadcasts in a way that's been safe? Um, and there's been a lot of ways that we've done that. I think if you look at the NBA restart um, and the NBA bubble in Orlando, you know, we had a probably the most and the unprecedented level of collaboration with the leagues that I've ever seen. We were essentially lockstep trying to figure out how to really create an engaging um, end to the season while still keeping all of our personnel and athletes um, and our broadcast personnel safe. Uh, it also gave us the chance to try some different things. Um, you know, with no fans in stadiums or arenas, uh, it gave an opportunity to utilize technology in different ways. And one of the things that we did in the bubble was uh, we amplified uh, Michelob Ultra's courtside experience. So it gave fans the opportunity to attend games virtually um, and appear in huge billboards um, courtside. And so that was sort of a different engagement tool. We also had different celebrities that appeared um, and attended virtually. And we obviously could have only really done that um, in a situation where there weren't fans in attendance. We also tried different things from a broadcast perspective. So we set up stations for our commentators in their homes. You may have seen a video that went viral of one of our NBA and TNT analysts, Kevin Harlan, whose daughter posted a video of him calling NBA games from his basement. So I think from a from a um, how the sports leagues have responded perspective, you know, certainly a lot of protocols and procedures in place. Um, ones that we worked very closely with them on, uh, but always with an eye towards trying to both engage fans, but also keep health and safety top of mind. You know, I think one thing that's been interesting with games, um, you know, not having games, let's take the period when there were no games, you know, and looking at what fan reaction or fan relationship has been like. And honestly, access, I think, has really, real-time access has really enabled um, fan relationships to continue to be really strong, even in the absence of gameplay. So athletes, and I'll take the NBA in particular, um, have such strong personalities, have huge followings, have their personal brands of their own. And it really has created a situation where um, there's drama and interest and fan connection year round, even when there's not a game on. And I think that's something that while there weren't games uh, taking place, that really kept fans' interest and also connections really active. Um, you know, I think from a from a fan perspective in terms of consumption, uh, one of the things that we're seeing is you know what you're largely seeing in media generally, which is really high interest in sports. Um, but fans want to watch when they want to watch on their own terms and on multiple platforms. And so, while sports continues to be highly engaging um, throughout this period of a pandemic where you had games or games in a bubble or games happening as they are now with limited or no fans, you know, it's been paramount for us from the media side to make sure to reach fans where they are in the way that they want to be reached. Please share with us sort of the changing attitude and involvement of brands around live sports through this period and, and kind of how that might actually uh, change uh, the way business is being done? I think, you know, one of the things that's always been really unique about sports is that uh, between the level of interest, both around live games, but also what I mentioned about all of the interest outside of the game and off of the court, it really gives advertisers and I think continues to give advertisers, even during this time of the pandemic, uh, an opportunity for a um, always on investment, whether the games are on or not. You know, we've historically had 
really large scale um, media partnerships that are multifaceted with advertisers that really let us, um, you know, establish a lot of trust with the advertiser, get a deep understanding of their goals and really tailor solutions that meet their needs. You know, you asked the question of what's changed for advertisers. I, I think high level advertisers and what they're looking for is largely the same um, as it's always been, which is build relationships with their customers and drive results for their business, whether that's brand awareness or sales or whatever their particular metrics are. I think for us, what's changed in the media landscape is really the tools in our arsenal of what we can offer those advertisers. And um, one of the things that has really increased for us is around branded content that resonates with audiences specifically. Um, so while we historically and continue to provide really comprehensive bundles for our advertisers that have media, events, um, all types of things, branded content is really an area that's targeted to specific audiences that we've really increased. And one example that I'll just give you is around Playmaker, which is um, our in-house agency for Bleacher Report. Uh, they have a really strong focus on a Gen Z and millennial audience. I mean, Bleacher Report obviously being um, one of the number one brands for that audience knows it so well. And so to be able to take that and tailor solutions for clients that involve animation, scripted, unscripted content, e-commerce collaborations is really an area that we've seen um, growth. The other area I would say that's been um, an increased area for us and also in particular important in this time is around insights. And so, you know, being able to show advertisers um, how their investments are delivering results and also how we use insights in the planning process has been a really strong tool for us as it relates to advertisers. In particular, um, being part of AT&T and being able to take, um, you know, insights from our larger portfolio and apply that to Turner Sports and Bleacher Report advertisers has been um, a differentiator for us. Tina, tell us about some of the creative programming that you've done during this period. So I'm really proud of the creative programming that our teams produced during this pandemic, not only because it resonated with audiences, but also because it was relevant to the times that our country was experiencing. So. In 2020, we hosted two iterations of the match, um, but we configured them to really support and amplify the times that we were living in. So raising funds for COVID-19 relief, highlighting historically black colleges and universities, and also raising funds for their golf and sports journalism programs and contributing millions of meals to Feeding America to help those struggling with food security. Um, along with these achievements, we were also able to deliver two really compelling events that were engaging, funny, drove record engagement across all of our platforms. I think highlighting that proving, um, proving the point that doing well and doing good don't have to be mutually exclusive. Um, you know, along with the pandemic, we also um, have been dealing with a lot of uh, highlighting, spotlight, much needed conversation around race and equality in our country. And, you know, sports has always been at the forefront of social activism, whether it's, you know, historically raising fists in protest at the Olympics or Muhammad Ali taking a stand against the draft. You know, athletes have always been at the center of social change and injustice. And, you know, at Turner Sports and Bleacher Report, we were able to provide platforms and launch programming to really help these conversations occur. So we created a brand new franchise called The Arena, which sits at the intersection of sports and culture you know, tackling both topics on and off the court that are of the moment. Uh, we aired it right before our NBA on TNT games. Um, and a few standout pieces that I'll just mention um, that show you the nature of the franchise. Uh, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar had a very personal tale of his social activism origins. We had Stacey Abrams lead a live discussion around voting and voter suppression. Killer Mike with a powerful message to America in the wake of the George Floyd murder and WNBA players talking about parenting and playing um, in the bubble in Orlando. Um, Dwayne Wade also for us, in addition to the arena, produced some really poignant Bleacher Report videos around activism um, and athletes in this unprecedented times. And we also produced um, a new series with Taylor Rooks called 
Take It There, which is a series uh, around race from the perspective of high profile athletes. So with all the challenges um, and continuing the conversations around race and equality, I think you know, we want to continue to create content that fans are really passionate about.